okay, I want to use the centripetal acceleration formula to do something fun and useful. So this is, uh, this is a, uh, a ball mounted to a string and it's swinging around in a horizontal circle. So I'll try to draw that here, but this is, this is down. And so it's actually going around like that. One of the great examples of these, I've seen a lot of physics uh, classrooms that have a flying pig. And so it's a pig with wings on the uh, hanging on the string and it flies in a circle like this. Uh, so we have a couple of things. We have the angle that it makes with the, the vertical. We have the length of the string. We have the velocity and the mass. Okay, so let's see what kind of relationship we can get here. So the first thing I want to do is to look at this instant right here and draw a force diagram. So what is acting on this mass? I have the gravitational force that's down, mg. And then I have the tension in the string. So remember, the tension is a constraint force. So it can only pull in the direction that the string is, and we don't know the magnitude. It could be literally anything. So other than that, I'm going to pick this is my x axis those are my only two forces that's my x axis and that's my y axis okay so now just a little geometry here if i draw this line right here these two lines are parallel and so i have a line intersecting parallel lines so this is also theta okay so now now i'm all and i'm all set um okay so first let's do the uh use the force law so we say F net equals MA. So that's not that useful. Instead, I'd like to break that into two pieces. F net X equals MAX. F net Y equals MAY. Now, one of these is zero, okay? Not both of them, one of them. Now, this is the important part. If I pick my coordinate system such that the acceleration is in just one direction, I'm going to make my life happy. Okay. So in this case, if this is moving around in a circle, it's not accelerating up or down because it's, it's staying in that flat plane. And it is accelerating in the x direction because that's towards the center of the circle. So in this case, the y acceleration is zero and the x acceleration is centripetal acceleration. So let's look at the y first. So what forces do we have in the y direction? I know this is equal to zero, right? And so what forces do I have? Well, I have part of the tension right there. And you'll see here that this is the adjacent side of that triangle. So if I have the adjacent side of the triangle to find the y component, this would be T cosine theta because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then I have the gravitational force in the negative y direction. I put zero in there twice. So in this expression, I would imagine I could know m and theta, but, so I don't know the tension. So I could actually solve this for the tension, and I get, if I add mg to both sides and divide by cosine theta, I get mg over cosine theta. Okay, now let's look at the y direction. Uh, I mean, the x direction. One of the things here that I'm gonna need is the radius, the radius of the circle. So if I look at this big triangle right here, this is some length L, this is the opposite side of that. So I know R is gonna be equal to L sine theta. Sine is the opposite side, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, and that's the radius. So I can solve for that and I get L sine theta. Now what forces are acting in the x direction? It's just this other component of the tension, which is gonna be T sine theta. So I get T sine theta equals M times the acceleration, which is gonna be V squared over R. And I can write that as M V squared over L sine theta. Now, what do you want to solve for here? Really, we have we have two things we could consider. First of all, the mass cancels. That's kind of cool. Nope, that doesn't cancel. Um, actually, it does. Because uh, this T, I cancel right there, I'm so dumb. Okay, so let's put in this T over there because I don't really care about the tension. So now I get mg uh, sine theta over cosine theta equals m v squared over l sine theta. 
So now what I want to solve for, let's say how fast I need to go at that angle, but one of the things you can see is that there is a relationship between the angle and the, um, the velocity, okay? Uh, let's just solve for that. So I'm gonna solve this for V squared. The mass here does cancel. So I get V squared equals L sine squared theta over cosine theta times G. Now, does that even make sense? Okay, uh, so this is gonna have no units right here. This is meters per second squared times meters. So I get meters squared per second squared, so that is velocity. So that is a good relationship between those two things. As I increase the angle theta, you actually have to go faster. Okay, so you can try plugging some numbers in there. Um, because uh, what would happen is that the tension, if, if I increase the angle up here, so the tension would be going like this. Now I need a much larger magnitude of tension in order to keep this thing uh, from falling down. Uh, and more component of that is pushing in the X direction. So I'm gonna have a very, very, very large force in the X direction that causes centripetal acceleration. So uh, increasing theta makes this thing go faster. But I think I'm gonna end there. I know I didn't solve for a particular value. I derived a general expression. Uh, but from this, I think you can, you get a lot of problems like this. I think from this, you could solve any number of interesting problems.